Oh my God, it's exhausting some days. All the Republican uh, going on around the world. Uh, Penny tweets, Oklahoma's governor signed a bill making it illegal to film police. He also signed a bill allowing protesters to be run over. Another bill banning transgender children from participating in sports. Which is why uh, we are so excited when some when we have rock stars on our side who we got an opportunity to meet uh, a while back. But uh, listen to Representative Mondaire Jones of the great state of New York uh, yesterday on the House floor on D.C. I statehood. Have had enough of my colleagues' racist insinuations that somehow the people of Washington D.C. are incapable or even unworthy of our democracy. One Senate Republican said that D.C. wouldn't be a quote well-rounded working class state. I had no idea there were so many syllables in the word white. One of my House Republican colleagues said that DC shouldn't be a state because the district doesn't have a landfill. (laughs) My goodness, with all the racist trash my colleagues have brought to this debate, I can see why they're worried about having a place to put it. Thank you, Rockstar Cheers. Oh, I didn't have to ask Sean for Rockstar Cheers. Yeah. You know, when I do this, I mean Rockstar Cheers. Um, Representative Mondaire Jones, good morning. We're so excited to have you back. And I was saying I deserve a lot of credit because we are all so intimidated by you. Uh, your life story yes. is... <laughs> it highlights everyone else's poor choices. You were raised by a single mom who had, had multiple jobs, went to public school, of course, got your uh, Stanford law degree at Harvard, worked in Obama's Justice Department. You're the first uh, black gay con- Congress member. And uh, look at you knocking it out of the park in Congress. Mm-hmm. Wow. So I- I'm just honestly, we're just so um, grateful for you and what you're doing. Thank you. And it- it's such a pleasure to be able to be on your show again um, and-, and to be able to lead in the Congress on I think the issues of great importance today. Well, I, you know, Representative, I can't have been saying this all along. I'm just so tired of it seeming like there's two sets of rules for us and for them, right? I mean, as you, you are quite a student of history, by the way. I was like, oh, I see we're here in those Stanford and Harvard degrees. <laughs> she went through the whole history of the filibuster, the Supreme Court, um, just on Twitter. But I mean, as you know, the Dakotas were split for the sole purpose of giving, you know, Republicans more power and four senators for less people than are in D.C. I mean, it's it just you can go back through history. And every time, as you pointed out, the Supreme Court, they did it. They expanded the Supreme Court when right when it fit their purposes. And, you know, Mitch McConnell would do the same thing again if, God forbid, things change hands in 2022. Right. Absolutely. And and we've we've got to push back on these false narratives that are being propagated by Republicans. I've been thinking to myself, our public education system has really failed people in this country. I mean, there's been so many ahistorical statements made uh, in committee. I sit on the Judiciary Committee uh, with some of the most egregious members of the Republican caucus. Uh, and, and I just sort of take note that's wrong. That's wrong. That's demonstrably false. You know, you know, Jim Jordan uh, talking uh, about how things are unconstitutional. I mean, our Article three provides Congress the ability to change the size of the Supreme Court. And in fact, uh, the Congress has done that seven times in our nation's history, including to defeat white supremacy. When I think back to what happened uh, in 1866 with Andrew Johnson after Lincoln had been assassinated, uh, becoming president, and he was against Reconstruction. Yeah. And so Congress, rather than allow uh, Andrew Johnson to appoint a white supremacist to the Supreme Court, decided to shrink the size of the Supreme yeah. Court. We must use the levers of power uh, in the way that our predecessors have in order to save our democracy. Yeah. This isn't part about saving our democracy, and I've been, I've been harping specifically on the issue of the fundamental right to vote in this country, which the Roberts Court Uh, has been hostile to consistently. It's never seen a voter suppression law that it has found to be unconstitutional. Yeah, yeah. John Roberts said racism is all over. Remember that? A few years ago. That certainly (laughs) proved to be true. Um, I see right away you can tell that you're much more educated and classy than we we are because uh, we use a different word for those members other than egregious for your colleagues. (laughs) 
Yeah. Jim Jordan. Okay. Um, yeah, but you said, uh, I mean, all of these issues in some ways, you know, are interconnected. You've written two pieces about D.C. statehood. Um, you just, I mean, what, you know, the piece we just played was so great. But I love that Republicans just erupted in anger at what we just played that you just said that was completely on point. Right. And uh, you said the truth is here. There's no good faith argument for disenfranchising. Right. I mean, I, you know, history better than I do represent. Wasn't there a war, something taxation, representation, something, something wasn't <laughs> wasn't that something in our history? Members <laughs> are, re are reminded of that because all you, do, all you do, all you need to do is look at a license plate in Washington, D.C. and be reminded of taxation. People yeah. do their uh, unfortunately. Um, you know, t terribly motivated uh, agenda. And, and that is an agenda of white supremacy in the modern era, era uh, where the Republican Party cannot compete on the merits of its policy ideas. So it's seeking to disenfranchise large swabs of the American le electorate. And we know that those people are, are black, brown, uh, working class and young people. And so we have to stand up in the way that they have done for nefarious purposes, unfortunately, to your point, you know, you know that if the roles were reversed, Mitch McConnell would be doing precisely the same thing. Yeah. Fortunately, within, his, you know, within his caucus, there would be not nearly as much pushback right. uh, as, as I've gotten from some people uh, within yeah. the caucus. Yeah. I will say you've got a lot of co-sponsors already, people who have reached out to me to say, I'm in on expanding yeah. the by adding four seats under the Judiciary Act of 2021. I, that lady, one, I, can, I don't know which one of your egregious colleagues that was, but um, <laughs> that was, I mean, hilarious that Liz Cheney's standing right behind her with less people than she represents that are in D.C. Yeah. She's like, well, there's just, you know, of people. I mean, it's just, it's insane. You said these desperate objections are about fear, fear that, uh, that in D.C. their white supremacist politics will no longer play, fear that soon enough white supremacist politics won't work anywhere in America, fear that if they don't rig our democracy, they will not win. Just the one state I picked, Representative, that, you know, like, oh, don't like protests? We'll make it okay to, to kill someone with your car if they're protesting. Like, oh, I see, Derek Chauvin, we finally got justice in one case. Oh, we'll make it illegal for people to film the police. I mean, oh, they didn't vote for us. Let's find a way to make sure that that black people can't vote. I mean, it's it's uh, it's just it, it, in some ways it's surprising that we're here in in uh, twenty what year is it twenty twenty one? Isn't it twenty? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? I, I mean, mean, it's you know, it really is three steps forward, two step back. Some days, isn't it? There is a desperation, a palpable sense of desperation. Uh, that I, th I think we're beginning to see from Republicans in Congress uh, and in, in right-wing media like Tucker, Tucker Carlson, who yeah. um, ha has now explicitly endorsed uh, white replacement theory. Uh, there is this feeling that the diversification of America is speeding up and uh, the shrinking minority that had outsized control of our government uh, is 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 losing power at a rate uh, that it has been unprecedented. And so now you see situations where, you know, most of my Republican colleagues on the House floor are not even defending against the claims that they are seeking to disenfranchise certain groups yeah. of people, even pivot to things like, well, some votes yeah. are more valuable than other votes, which is... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, even Tucker Carlson has turned into a, a Batman villain. Have you heard? Do we still have his maniacal laugh? I hate to haunt your dreams like this, but, but you know, we're just, I, is it me or are they just, you're right, they're more just outwardly awful and they just think it's okay to be that outwardly racist. I mean, Josh Hawley thinks it's okay to vote against the COVID anti-Asian hate crimes bill. Like for, I, they don't even, they don't even bother with a reason, right? I mean, it's just, it, it's. I, I just literally some mornings I think like, do they just want to be on the side of everything awful? Is that, is that because they're becoming associated with trying to reverse every progress we've made in this century, it seems like, right? Yeah. And, and of course, the, the base has been there for a while now, if we are to be honest with ourselves, of the base of the Republican Party. But Donald Trump gave permission uh, that that now cannot be taken back. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and there is a... Uh, a, a caucus that has really a, a subset of the of the GOP base 
that has really won the Civil War, uh, I think, within the party at this point. When, yeah. when you see Lauren Boebert and Marjorie Taylor yeah. who just unsuccessfully tried to create this America First Caucus uh, that explicitly uh, pr proposed, you know, the, the, in, the returning back to Anglo-Saxon traditions. Yeah, yeah. It's not even dog whistles anymore. Well, let's talk about filibuster, because that is just, to me, stopping everything. And you said the Jim Crow filibuster has been weaponized to block progress for decades to deliver meaningful change on everything from voting rights to gun violence pre prevention. The Senate must end the, the filibuster. Um, you, um, obviously, and some other colleagues have been have called on them to do so. There's, what, 97 of you or something now that have uh, signed this letter? And, and, and this is where we get to a problem within the Democratic Party, right? I mean, we we don't expect Republicans today in the Congress to uh, to negotiate in good faith. Uh, but there's no reason for a mansion and cinema and a handful of other folks uh, to to be opposed to repealing or at least reforming the filibuster so that we can pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Act, uh, the For the People Act, yeah. S1, um, which was H HR1 in the House, uh, things that are required to save our democracy. I mean, why would you want to be known as the as a senator who blocked voting rights from happening as we watch? Well, they're they're part of a handful of Democrats that aren't even on record about where they stand on D.C. statehood. That would just seem like a no brainer to me, you know, but I just I mean, you have to sometimes wonder, are they afraid it's going to take away their power because we'll have enough Democratic senators that we don't have to bow and scrape to one or two you know, on everything. I mean, it's, and, and what I'm looking at is the same thing President Biden talks about. Vast, huge majorities of the American people are for all of these things we want to do. It is bipartisan in the country, you know. I mean, and you, I, the Supreme Court stuff, I thought you were so on point again. You said it's not unprecedented for Congress to adjust the size of the Supreme Court to defeat white supremacy. We've done it three times before. We must expand the court. You said here's why it's mat mat why it matters. And you talk, you go through the three times it's been done previously. Um, today's far right majority has been reviving Jim Crow. We must learn from history, do what it takes to stop them. Um, and further, you said our democracy is under assault. As you said earlier, the Supreme Court has dealt the sharpest blows. So you and uh, obviously Nadler, Markey, you have the uh, Judiciary Act of 2021. You are on every you are everywhere on every issue. <laughs> mm -hmm. Your name's on every act and every I mean, it's it, good for you because it just yeah. feels like there's so much to do. Right. But you don't seem intimidated by it. Not at all. This is the fight of our lives. And if we don't have a democracy, then we have nothing. We, we can't have uh, climate legislation that will save us from catastrophe uh, that is imminent. You know, we, we can't have racial justice in policing. We can't have health care for all in the, in the midst of a global pandemic. Uh, and so we, we must secure the right to vote in this country. And when I think back to what the Roberts Court did in 2013, when it, it struck down the heart of the Voting Rights Act, yeah which has then led now to, to SB202, that, that law in Georgia and what's being attempted in 43 states. Yeah. I have to do something. And, and, I have to, and I have to stand up to these people in a way that, unfortunately, too few people have been doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can we, I'm sorry to do this to you, but now I feel like your family already. And we only hurt the ones we love. Right. Um, can I have cut six? Sean, this is everybody's talking about what Senator Ted Cruz said yesterday about the Supreme mm -hmm. Court. We had a Republican president, a Republican Senate, and a Republican House. We didn't do this. We could have. They love to say Donald Trump to paint him as some crazy autocrat. Yeah. You see, Republicans, when we had control of the Senate, try to rig the game. Oh, my God. You didn't see us just try to pack the court. There was nothing that would have prevented Republicans from doing what they're doing other than respect for the rule of law, other than mm. basic decency, other than recognizing that democracy matters. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Okay. Did your head just explode? Because um, what would you call Merrick Garland, right? What would you call denying the first black president for almost a year, a Supreme Court pick? What would you call shoving through a justice when how many million people had already voted in the middle of an election? I mean, right. it, it is, it, they have no, sh this is what happens. They have no shame, right? About rewriting history. 
Yeah, he, he, Ted Cruz is 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 terrible. I mean, you know, not only not only have Republicans been packing the court, including the lower courts, but we also know that Ted Cruz packed his bags to go to Cancun in the midst of a, a climate catastrophe in Texas. So uh, he he is not someone who's credible on this or really any other subject, and it, and it's really shameful because he represents the very worst of the Republican Party today. Mm-hmm.